Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Once all. Now we will be moving forward in the topic with section ATD. Section ATD is the deduction in respect of medical insurance premium. In case of an individual, deduction in respect of insurance premium paid for family, or deduction to the extent of twenty five thousand is allowed in respect of the following payments: premium paid to if effect or keep in force an insurance on the health of uh, self, spouse, and dependent children. These are included in your family. Family consists of self, spouse, and dependent children for premium paid in respect of family for section eighty D. Any contribution made to the central government health scheme, that is also referred as CGHS, such other health scheme as may be notified by the central government. Contributory health service scheme of the Department of Atomic Energy has been notified by the government. Now, second deduction is in respect of insurance premium for parents. Mind you, for section eighty, the parents does not come in family. They have they have been given a separate section, uh, separate part for it. Uh, first is for family. Second is for in respect of insurance premium for parents. A further deduction up to rupees twenty five thousand is allowable. to keep effect or to keep in force an insurance on the health of parents of the assc parents of the assc quantum of deduction in case of senior citizen an increased deduction of 50000 instead of 25000 shall be allowed in case any of the persons mentioned above is a senior citizen an individual resident in india of the age of 60 years or more at any time during the previous year so So instead of fifty thousand, uh, instead of twenty five thousand, fifty thousand would be allowable as a deduction in case any of the persons mentioned above that is uh, is a senior citizen, that is an individual which is resident in India and is of the age of sixty years or more at any time during the pre- previous year. So if any of the person mentioned above is a senior citizen, then instead of So twenty five thousand, fifty thousand would be an allowable expenditure, a deduction in case of section eighty D. Moving forward, deduction in respect of payment towards preventive health checkup. Section eighty D provides that deduction to the extent of five thousand shall be allowed in respect of payment paid on account of preventive health checkup of self, spouse, dependent children or parents made during the previous year. However, the said deduction of five thousand. Is within the overall limit of twenty five thousand or fifty thousand specified in A and B above. Mode of payment for claiming such deduction under Section eighty D, the payment can be made by any mode, including cash, in respect of any sum paid on account of preventive health checkup by any other mode other than cash in all other cases. So five thousand. Uh, cash maximum five thousand cash can be allowed for preventive health checkup. Rest other has to be paid by any other mode other than cash that is through electronic that is RTGS, NFT, UPI, etc. So for other uh, insurance premium for all other uh, expenditures for reduction, they have to made by any other mode other than cash. Only preventive health checkup maximum which is maximum up to five thousand can be made through cash. and preventive health checkup can be for self spouse dependent children or parents deduction for medical expenditure incurred on senior citizens as a welfare measure towards senior citizens persons of the age of 60 years or more and resident in india who are unable to get health insurance coverage deduction of up to 50000 would be allowed in respect of any payment made on account of medical expenditure in respect of such persons if no payment has been made to keep in force an insurance on the health of such persons so if you have uh, when uh, um, usually you you can see that if there are senior citizens who are of the age of 75 plus or 80 plus so you cannot usually get an insurance premium health insurance premium for them so if you cannot get a health insurance premium for them then government has given you a sigh of relief by allowing medical expenditure incurred on senior citizens instead of if there is no health insurance premium for the same which also again gives a deduction of maximum up to 50000 
senior citizen means who is of the age of 60 years or more at any time during the previous year. In case of HO, deduction under section 80D is allowable in respect of premium paid to ensure the health of any member of the family. Any member. The maximum deduction allowable to HUF would be 25,000 and in case any member is a senior citizen, it is 50,000. So if normally the deduction available to HUF would be 25,000, but if any member of the HUF is a senior citizen that is of the age of 60 years or more at any time during the previous year, then the de maximum deduction available will be 50,000. Further, the amount paid on account of medical expenditure incurred on the health of any member of the family who is a senior citizen would qualify for deduction subject to a maximum of 50,000 provided no amount has been paid to effect of keep in force any insurance on the health of such person. So the second point is that when an amount is paid on the medical expenditure on the health of a person who is a senior citizen and for which you cannot have a health insurance premium or you do not have a health insurance premium or you cannot take an health insurance premium on the health of such persons then the maximum deduction allowable would be 50,000. Other conditions. The other conditions to be fulfilled that are, are that such premium should be paid by any mode other than cash. So, by any mode other than cash in the previous year, out of his income chargeable to tax. Further, the medical insurance should be in accordance with the scheme made in this behalf by the General Insurance Corporation of India and approved by the central government in this behalf or any other insurance and approved by the Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority that is IRDA. The following table summarizes the provisions of section 80. So we have here completed section 80D. We will just take a summary of it. Any premium paid otherwise than by way of cash to otherwise than by way of cash to give in force and insurance on the health of in case of individual that is cell, spouse and dependent children and in case of HUF any member normally the allowable expenditure is 25,000. Also the 25,000 would include contribution to central government health scheme and preventive health checkup so the maximum in case of individuals families is uh, self spouse dependent children would be 25000 and for parents it would again be 25000 any prim otherwise then by way of cash otherwise then by way of to give in force and insurance on the health either insurance or preventive health checkup would be 25000 but if your parents are above any of the persons uh, in the families of the age of 60 years or more and resident in India then the deduction would become 50,000 instead of 25,000 and in case of parents also if any of the parents is of the age of 60 years or more the deduction would become 50,000 so uh, normally the deduction for individual th that is in case of the deduction available to the individual SSC for his self, self spouse and dependent children paid for uh, otherwise than by cash for premium paid on the insurance of health on central government health scheme and preventive health checkup is 25,000 for individual and for uh, his parents it, uh, when he has paid any amount for his parents again 25,000 is allowable when it is paid for to keep an insurance or preventive health checkup and when uh, any of the parents is uh, and for HUF it is uh, when it is paid for any family member it is 25,000 but when any of the above persons is of the of 60 years or more the deduction in case of individual becomes 50,000 and also in case of parents is be it becomes 50,000 maximum 5,000 is allowed as a deduction for aggregate of preventive health checkup expenditure by any mode including cash mentioned in 1 and 2 subject to overall limit of 25,000 or 50,000 as the case be. So my 5,000 is allowed maximum for including for parents also so self, spouse, dependent children and parents including all of them the maximum deduction allowable is 5,000. It can be paid through cash amount paid on account of medical expenditure for self, spouse, parents who is of the age of 60 years or more and resident in India and no payment has been made to keep an force and insurance on the health of such person then 50,000 deduction is allowed for medical expenditure again repeating it is for medical expenditure for which no insurance is there 
uh, it is for sales spouse parents who is of the age of 60 years or more resident no payment has been made to keep an insurance in force on the health of such person then 50000 is allowable as a deduction in case of the individual or any of his family members is a senior citizen the aggregate of deduction in respect of payment of premium contributed contribution to central government health scheme and medical expenditure incurred as specified in 1 and 3 above cannot exceed 50000 in case of any of your parents in a senior citizen who is covered under mediclaim policy and another is also a senior citizen but not claimed under the mediclaim policy the aggregate of deduction in respect of payment of medical insurance premium and medical expenditure incurred as specified in 2 and 3 above cannot exceed 50000 so that deduction cannot exceed 50000 in case of family so first point says that in case the individual or any मतलब या तो वो इंडिविजुअल या उसका कोई भी फैमिली मेंबर अगर कोई सीनियर सिटीजन है तो जो मैक्सिमम डिडक्शन उसको अलाइबल है पे, अगर वो पेमेंट ऑफ प्रीमियम पे सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट हेल्थ स्कीम में और मेडिकल एक्सपेंस एंकर्ड में तो ये सब मिला के फिफ्टी थाउजेंड से ज़्यादा नहीं हो सकते और अगर अगर उसका एक भी कोई पेरेंट्स अगर सीनियर सिटीजन है जो मेडिक्लेम पॉलिसी में कवर्ड है और अगर दूसरा कोई पेरेंट है जो मेडिक्लेम पॉलिसी में कवर्ड नहीं है तो भी जो एग्रीकेट डिडक्शन उसको मिलेगा टू और थ्री पॉइंट्स में यहाँ प्रीमियम ये टू और थ्री में इट कैन नॉट एक्सीड फिफ्टी थाउजेंड डिडक्शन वेर प्रीमियम फॉर हेल्थ इंश्योरेंस इज पेड इन लमसम appropriate fraction of lump sum premium allowable as deduction in case where a medical premium is paid in lump sum for one more than one year by an individual to effect or to keep in force an insurance on his health or health of his spouse dependent children or parents or an hf to effect or keep in force an insurance on the health of any member of the family then the deduction allowable under this section for each of the relevant previous year would be equal to the appropriate fraction of such lump sum payment so basically it is you have to do proportionate uh, by number of days the if the lump sum premium is paid suppose for 2 years so you have to bifurcate it uh, with the help of number of days appropriate fraction that is you have to proportionately allocate the premium amount between first and second year in case the policies of two years uh, in case the policy of more than two years or any number of years so you have to proportionately bifurcate it for each number each of the year appropriate fraction is one divided by total number of relevant previous year and previous year in which uh, previous year relevant previous year is the previous year in which lump sum amount is paid and the subsequent amount during which the insurance would be in Moving forward in the discussion, we have illustration 7. Mr. Ravi, who is aged 45 years, made medical insurance premium of 22,000 during the year to ensure his health as well as the health of his spouse, self, individual himself and the spouse. He also paid medical insurance premium of 47,000 during the year to ensure the health of his father, who is aged 65 years, means he is a senior citizen, who is not dependent on him. Mind you, there is no condition of dependency for parents under section 80D. It's only for the children that the individual has condition of dependency. That is, dependent only he can pay the medical insurance premium for dependent children. He contributed 4,600 to the central government health scheme during the year. He has incurred 3,000 in cash on preventive health checkup of himself and his spouse, and 4,500 by check on preventive health checkup of his father. Uh, mind you, maximum 5,000 can be availed as preventive health checkup for individual himself, his family, and his and his uh, his or her parents. Maximum 5,000 can be availed. It can be paid by uh, either the whole amount can be expected by cash, or it can be paid through electronic board, or it can be paid partly by cash and partly by electric, any mode. It can be paid by any mode basically. And they have asked you to compute the deduction allowable under Section 80 for the assessment year. Mind you, the format in the exam should be in a presentable format like this, as described, as it is suggested by us here in this illustrations. This also gives an examiner a good look on examination.
this format looks a very in a very presentable and a nice format and it's so it should be in this format so the medical pre premium paid and medical expenditure incurred for self and spouse medical insurance paid for self and spouse it is 22000 and the whole amount would be allowable deduction because an for an individual maximum 25000 can be availed so for uh, the medical insurance premium 20000 whole amount is can be availed now 25,000 minus 22,000 only 3,000 maximum deduction can be availed now so the individual has contributed for himself and his spouse 4,600 but the maximum deduction which can be availed by individual is only 3,000 that is 25 minus 22 so 3,000 so the expenditure incurred on preventive health checkup of self and spouse cannot be availed as the maximum limit has already been availed by the individual now premium paid for paid and medical expenditure incurred for father who is a senior citizen so as the individual's father is uh, a senior citizen who is the age of 60 years or more the maximum deduction which can be availed under section 880 for parents is 50,000 so premium medical premium paid for father who is 60 years of age is 47,000 the whole amount can be availed as expenditure now the expenditure on preventive health checkup is 4,500 but the maximum which can be availed is 50,000 minus 47,000 that is 3,000 so he cannot not claim the 1500 deduction on preventive health check of his father now the total deduction availed is 25000 minus uh, 25000 plus 50000 that is 75000 so the total deduction under section under a123 that is on individual self spouse uh, should not exceed 25000 therefore the contribution to central government health scheme would be restricted to 3000 that is 25 minus 22 and the expenditure on preventive health checkup for self and spouse would be nil uh, because already the 25,000 deduction has been availed by the individual the total deduction under B that is for father father uh, or parents basically uh, under 1 and 2 medical premium and expenditure on preventive health checkup should not exceed 50,000 therefore the expenditure on preventive health checkup of father would be restricted to 3,000 see here it is restricted to 3000 only although the individual has incurred the expenditure of 4500 would be restricted to 3000 being 50000 minus 47000 in this case the total deduction allowed on account of expenditure on preventive health checkup of self spouse and father is 3000 which is less than the maximum permissible limit of 5000 now moving towards next illustri illustration Mr. Yatin, who is aged 48 years, paid medical insurance premium of 23,000 during the year to ensure his health as well as the health of his spouse and dependent children. He also paid medical insurance premium of 35,000 during the year to ensure the health of his mother, who, who is aged 71 years, who is not dependent on him. Again mentioning, there is no condition of dependency for parents, it is only for the children uh, in section 80D that the dependency condition is there and also the age of mother is 71 years so she is a senior citizen he incurred medical expenditure of 24,000 on his father who is aged 78 years senior citizen who is not covered under medical policy so one parent of an, the individual is covered under med, medical insurance medical, medical insurance premium and the other is not covered under the medical policy his father is also not dependent on him but there is no condition of dependency for parents he contributed 6500 to central government health scheme during the year compute the deduction allowable under section 80d for the assessment again in the same format deduction allowable under section 80d for the assessment year is medical insurance premium paid for self spouse and dependent is 23000 and contrib contribution to central government health scheme is 6500 so total deduction uh, total expenditure is 29500 but the maximum deduction that can be availed is only 25000 for self medical premium paid for mother who is over 60 years of age is 35000 and for in expenditure incurred for the father who is not covered under the medical medical insurance policy is 24000 with the total expenditure is 59000 but the maximum which can be availed is 50000 so total deduction which can be claimed by the individual is 75,000. Now moving towards section 80DD that is deduction in respect of maintenance including medical treatment of a 
dependent disabled so you can remember section 80d as dependent disabled and 80d as disease or something else like that section 80d provides deduction to an SSE who is a resident in India being an individual or HF payment qualifying for deduction any amount which is incurred for the medical treatment including nursing training rehabilitation of a dependent being a person with a disability or paid or deposited under scheme framed in this behalf by the life insurance corporation or any other insurer or the administrator of the specified company as referred to in section 2h of the unit trust of india transfer of undertaking at repeal act 2002 for the maintenance of a dependent being a person with disability qualifies call for deduction so any amount which is incurred for the medical treatment including nursing training rehabilitation of a dependent being a person with disability and any amount which is paid or deposit for a scheme which is framed by lic or any other insurer or administrator of the specified company as referred to in the UTI Act, for the which is for the maintenance of a disabled dependent, the amount qualifies for deduction under this section. Now, this uh, deduction can be claimed for only by individual or HUF. Uh, the scheme should provide for payment of annuity. Uh, the scheme uh, and uh, should provide for payment of annuity or lump sum amount for the benefit of a dependent being a person with a disability in the event of the death of the individual or member of the HUF in whose name subscription was made and the SEC must nominate either the dependent being a person with disability or any other person or a trust to receive the payment on his behalf for the benefit of the dependent being a person with disability. So normally the scheme should be for the uh, provide for the benefit of payment of annuity or lump sum amount for the benefit of the dependent and who is the person with the disability uh, in the event of that of the individual or member of HUF in whose name subscription was made for the policy so it, the policy can be either in the name of the dependent disabled or any person to receive the payment in the name of the dependent disabled or the trust who should receive it for the benefit of the dependent the benefit of deduction under this section is also available to assesses incurring expenditure on maintenance including medical treatment of persons suffering from autism cerebral palsy and multiple disabilities the amount of deduction is 75000 and in case of severe disability that is person with 80% or more disability the deduction shall be 125000 so the quantum of deduction normally it is 75000 but when the uh, person with disability is more than 80% or more than 80% dis is disabled then it is 1,25,000. For claiming the deduction, the CC shall have to furnish a copy of the certificate issued by the medical authority under the persons with disability, Equal Opportunities, Protection of Rights and Full Participation Act 1995 along with the return of income under section 139. Where the condition of disability requires assessment a fresh certificate from the medical authority shall have to be obtained after the expiry of the period mentioned in the original certificate in order to continue the claim of de the deduction if the dependent being a person with disability predeceases the individual or the member of the hf in whose name the subscription was made then the amount paid or deposited under the said scheme would be chargeable to tax in the hands of the ssc in the previous years in which such amount is received by the ss so basically there saying that uh, there are certain conditions for claiming the deduction under this section that is for claiming the deduction the association will have to furnish a certificate which is issued by the medical authority who has the authority to is issue such the medical authority which has the authority to issue such certificate for the persons with disability under this and uh, disability person with disability act 1995 along with you should also furnish a return under section 139 uh, where the condition of disability requires reassessment, a fresh certificate from the uh, medical authority would have to be obtained if there is a period uh, for the certificate. Means it is uh, available. Uh, the certificate is available for five years. Then a fresh certificate has to be issued after the 
expiry of the certificate or if the condition of disability requires a reassessment a uh, fresh certificate have to be obtained uh, and in third point they have said that if the dependent which is the person with the disability predeceases the individual or the member of the chief in whose name subscription was made means if he dies before then the amount paid or deposited under the said scheme would be chargeable to tax in the hands of the assc means if the uh, di- disabled person he dies before the individual or the member of the huf in whose name subscription was made then the amount paid or deposited under the said scheme would be chargeable to tax in the hands of assc in the previous years in which such amount is received by the assc now meaning of now what is the meaning of dependent for in if the assess is individual the spouse the children the parents the brother sister of the individual who is wholly or mainly dependent on such individual and who has not claimed a deduction under section atu so either uh, it can be deduction under section atu or section attd if the individual uh, who is uh the dependent disabled he should either claim the deduction under section atu or the assess uh, the individual assess he can claim the deduction under section attd it cannot be both under section attd the assess individual claims and the dependent disabled person claims it under the section atu it can be only under section attd d or under section at in case of huf if the assess is huf the dependent can be the member of the huf the wholly or mainly dependent on such huf and not claim deduction under section atu in the computation of his income so also in case of huf it can if the assess is huf it can be either the huf has claimed the deduction or the dependent disable has claimed the deduction under section at now moving towards illustration mr mohan who is a resident individual he deposits a sum of 60000 with lic every year for the maintenance of his disabled grandfather who is wholly dependent on him the disability is one which comes under the persons with disability equal opportunity protection of rights and full participation act 1995 a copy of the certificate from the medical authority is submitted computed amount of reduction available under section 80 dd for the assessment year since the amount is deposited by moving mohan for his grandfather he will not be allowed any deduction under section 80 dd the deduction is available if the individual assess incurs any expenditure for a dependent disabled relative grandfather does not come within the meaning of dependent as defined under section 80 dd what will be the deduction if mr mohan had made this deposit for his dependent father since the expense was incurred for a dependent disabled relative mr mohan will be entitled to claim a deduction of 75000 under section 80 dd irrespective of the amount deposited in case his father has severe disability then the deduction would be 125000 so important point in this two examples is the definition of the dependent for individual it can be spouse children parents brother sister of the individual who is wholly or mainly dependent on such individual and who has not claimed deduction under section 80u so uh, here no grandfather and grandmother can be come for individual and for huf it can be only member of huf so definition forms an important part of the discussion now moving forward in the discussion we have section 80 ddb that is deduction in respect of medical treatment who is an eligible assessee in this section this section provides deduction to an assessee who is resident in india being an individual also this section can be claimed for by individual and hf the deduction is available to an individual for medical expenditure incurred on himself or a dependent it is also available to a hf for such incur- expenditure which is incurred on any of its members now again the word dependent forms an important part of the discussion Uh, if the assess is individual the dependent can be spouse children parents brother or sister of the individual or any of that or any of them if they are wholly or mainly dependent on such individual for his support and maintenance 
If the access is HUF, then the dependent is a member of the HUF who is wholly or mainly dependent on such HUF for his support and maintenance. Payment which qualifies for deduction is any amount which is actually paid, actually paid for the med medical treatment of such disease or ailment as may be specified in the rules made in this behalf by the board for himself or a dependent in case the association is an individual or many of the member of the HUF in case the association the HUF will qualify for the deduction. So any amount which is actually paid qualifies for deduction under this section for the medical treatment of such disease or ailment as may see which is specified by the board for himself or a dependent. So any amount which is actually paid for the medical treatment or as may be as conditions may be as may be specified in this rule by the board or if the, if the uh, assess is HUF then for any member of HUF uh, the amount which is actually paid it qualifies for deduction. Now the quantum of deduction the amount of deduction under this section shall be equal to the amount actually paid or 40,000 whichever is less in respect of that previous year in which such amount was actually paid. When the amount is actually paid you can claim the deduction of 40,000 or amount which is actually paid whichever is less in, in that year. In case the amount is paid in respect of a senior citizen uh, what is a senior citizen? It is a resident individual who is of the age of 60 years or more at any time during the relevant previous year. Then the deduction would be actual amount paid or 1 lakh whichever is less. If it is paid for normal resi resident then it normal person there is no condition of residence for 40,000. So if it is paid for normal person it can be actual amount paid or 40,000 for dependent relatives. In case it is for a senior citizen who is a resident of 60 years or more, the deduction become actual amount paid or 1 lakh whichever is less. The deduction under this section shall be reduced by the amount received if any under the insurance from an insurer or reimbursed by an employer for the medical treatment of the SSC or the dependent. The maximum deduction, li maximum limit of deduction under section 80 DDB for the various categories of are summarized below. If it is a senior citizen being a resident individual, it is 1 lakh and other than if it is a other than senior citizen, then it is 40,000. So if there is a non-resident senior citizen, then uh, the maximum deduction which can be availed is 40,000. No such uh, condition, no such deduction shall be allowed unless the SSC obtains a prescription for such medical treatment from a neurologist, oncologist, urologist, hematologist and immunologist or such specialist as may be specified. So one thing you have noticed here is the deduction amount and such a here it is actual amount whereas in the above section which was section ATDD there was no uh, condition of the actual amount paid or uh, 70,000 less. It was any amount paid but the maximum uh, the deduction which could be availed by the individual was 75,000 and 125,000. There was no condition of actual uh, amount paid or this in section ATDD. But in this case, uh, in section ATDDB, there is condition of actual amount paid or 40,000 or 1 lakh as the case may be. But there was no condition of actual amount paid in this section ATDD. Now, moving forward in the discussion, we have section ADE that is deduction in respect of interest on loan taken for higher education section 80 so eligible SEC for section 80 provides is uh, section 80 provides deduction to an individual SEC in respect of any interest on loan paid by him in the previous year out of his income chargeable to tax so this is basically for uh, when you take loans for a higher education a condition is that lo loan must have been taken for the purpose of pursuing higher education or for the purpose of higher education of his or her relative. So the loan must have been taken from any financial institution or approved charitable institution. So the loan can be from any financial institution or any approved charitable institution. It is approved charitable institution. Now the term relative becomes an important part of the discussion here that is uh, for the term relative is spouse and children of the individual or the student for whom 
द इंडिविजुअल इज द लीगल गार्डियन हायर एजुकेशन मीन्स एनी कोर्स ऑफ स्टडी इंक्लूडिंग वोकेशनल स्टडीज परच्यूड आफ्टर पासिंग द सेकेंडरी सीनियर सेकेंडरी एग्जामिनेशन और इट्स इक्वेलेंट फ्रॉम एनी स्कूल बोर्ड और यूनिवर्सिटी रिकोगनाइज बाय द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट और स्टेट गवर्नमेंट और लोकल अथॉरिटी और बाय एनी अथॉरिटी ऑथोराइज बाय द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट और स्टेट गवर्नमेंट और लोकल अथॉरिटी टू डू सो देयर फॉर इंटरेस्ट ऑन लोन टेकन फॉर परस्यूइंग एनी कोर्स आफ्टर क्लास ट्वेल्थ और इट्स इक्वेलेंट विल क्वालिफाई फॉर डिडक्शन अंडर सेक्शन एटी हायर एजुकेशन बेसिकली मीन्स एजुकेशन विच इज परस्यूड आफ्टर क्लास ट्वेल्थ and the relative is the spouse or the children of the individual there is no condition of dependency or the student for whom the individual is the legal guardian the period of education the deduction is allowed in computing the total income in respect of the initial assessment year means the assessment year relevant to the previous year in which the assessee starts paying the interest on the loan and seven years immediately succeeding the initial assessment year or until the interest is paid in full by the assc whichever is earlier so either it can be 8 years or if the assc pays the interest uh, within the 5 years interest he closes the loan so 5 years from the day the assc starts paying the interest from that date if assc paid the whole loan in 6 years so he can avail the deduction for maximum 6 years or if he paid the interest for 11 years then the maximum deduction under section 80 can be availed for only 8 years now approved charitable institution means an institution which is established for charitable purpose and approved by the prescribed authority under section 1023c which we will study later on or an institution referred to in section 80g2a financial institution it means a banking company to which the banking regulation act 1949 applies including a bank or banking institution referred to in section 51 of the act or any other financial institution which is the central government may by notification in the official gazette specify in this behalf now let us see an illustration mr gopal has taken three educational loans on april 1 2021 the details of which are given below for whose loan one loan two three loans for whose education purpose loan was taken first loan was taken for the gopal himself second was taken for his son and third was taken for his daughter purpose was for mba btech of his son and btech of his daughter amount of loan was 6 lakh 3 lakh 4 lakh 50000 annual pay, repayment of loan was 1 lakh 20000 48000 and 88000 this was principal and annual repayment of interest is 24000 12000 and 16000 so compute the maximum deduction allowable under section 80 for the assessment year the deduction under section 80 is available to any individual assc in respect of any interest paid by him in the previous year in respect of loan taken for the purpose of pursuing his higher education or higher education of his spouse or children higher education means any course of study pursued after senior secondary examination therefore the interest payment repayment in respect of all the above loans will be eligible for deduction the deduction under section 80 is 24000 for himself 12000 for his son and 16000 for his daughter so it comes maximum to 50000 there is no limit now section 80 ee deduction for interest on loan borrowed for acquisition of house property by an individual section 80 the eligible assessees provide section 80 e provides additional deduction in respect of interest on loan taken by an individual for acquisition of residential house property from any financial institution so the loan must be from an financial institution it it should be for uh, acquisition of house property by an individual the conditions to be satisfied for availing the deduction are as follows condition should be uh, for the uh, availing the deduction under section 80 is value of house should be less than or equal to 50 lakhs less than or equal to 50 lakhs so if, if if it is 50 lakhs then the deduction can be availed but if the amount of loan is suppose 50 lakh 50000 then the deduction cannot be availed second the loan should be sanctioned during the year previous year 16 17 so the loan should be sanctioned during the previous year 16 17 The assessee should not own any residential house property on the date of sanction of loan. So the individual should not 
the individual as we see he should not own any property any residential house on the date of selection of loan and the loan sanction should be less than or equal to 35 lakhs so the value of the house for which loan is taken should be less than or equal to 50 lakhs and the loan amount which is sanctioned to the SSC it should less than or equal to 35 lakhs the period of benefit the benefit of reduction under this section would be available till the repayment of loan continues there is no restriction on the period for the availing the benefit under this section so the benefit can be availed till the repayment of loan continues the quantum of deduction the maximum deduction available allowable under this section is 50000 rupees only the deduction up to 50000 under section 80e is over and above the deduction of up to 2 lakh available under section 24 for interest paid in respect of loan borrowed for acquisition of a self occupied property when you study in, uh, income from house property or house property provisions there you might have studied that uh, in case of a self occupied property under section we can avail a deduction of 2 lakh so this deduction is in addition to that deduction of 2 lakh under section 24 section e provides an additional deduction of up to 50000 meaning of certain terms so financial institution means a banking company to which the banking regulation act 1949 applies or any bank or banking institution referred to in section 51 of the banking regulation act 1949 or a housing finance company here uh, financial institution uh, definition as we studied in above in section 80 uh, here an additional thing is added that is a housing finance company because uh, housing loans are also given by housing finance company Housing finance company is a public company formed or registered in India with the main object of carrying on the business of providing long term finance for construction of purchases of houses in India for residential purposes. Now, illustration Mr. Phil, Mr. Ankur purchased a residential house property for self occupation at a cost of 48 lakhs on 1 4 2017, in respect of which he took a housing loan of 30 lakh, 35 lakh from the Bank of India at 11% per annum on the same date. The loan was sanctioned on 10th March 2017. Compute the eligible deduction in respect of interest on housing loan for assessment 22-23 under the provisions of the Income Tax Act 1961, assuming that the entire loan was outstanding on 31st March 2022 and he does not own any other house property. So, solving interest deduction for assessment year 22-23 deduction allowable while computing income under the head income from house property. Direction under section 24b is it is 385,000 how so uh, they have mentioned in the question that entire amount of loan is outstanding so 35 lakhs 11 percent that is interested the interest amount would be 385,000 so the amount which is restricted uh, which can be availed under section 24b it is maximum 2 lakh in case of self-occupied pro self -occupied property and deduction under section chapter 6 f uh, under section 80e can be maximum be 50,000 so uh, actually he the expenditure which was incurred by him was 3,85,000 lakh 2 lakh has been availed un, uh, in under section 24 and the rem, out of the remaining 1,85,000 the maximum which can be availed under section 80e is 50,000 so ma the maximum deduction he availed under section 24 was 2 lakh and under section Chapter 6a was 50,000. Deduction in respect of interest payable on loan taken for acquisition of residential house property. That is section 80 EEA. Eligible assessee and is an individual who has taken loan for acquisition of residential house property from any financial institution. Interest payable on such loan would qualify for deduction under this section. What are conditions for section 80 EEA? The conditions to be satisfied for availing this section are follows. The stamp duty value of the house should be less than or equal to 45 lakhs. Less than or equal to 45 lakhs. Uh, the individual should not claim, should not be eligible to claim deduction under section 80 EE. You should not claim deduction under section 80 EE. 
loan should be sanctioned by a financial institution during the period from 1st April 2019 to 31st March 2022. Then only he can avail deduction under Section 80 EEA. And last, the individual should not own any residential house property on the date of sanction of loan. So, repeating conditions again, the stamp duty value of the house should be less than or equal to 45 lakhs. The loan should be sanctioned by a financial institution during the period from 1st April 2019 to 31st March 2022. The individual should not be eligible to claim the deduction under Section 80 E, and the individual should not own any residential house property on the date of sanction of loan. The period of benefit. The benefit of deduction under this section would be available from assessment year 20 to 20 to 20, uh, 2021 to subsequent assessment years till the repayment of loan continues. Means it, if the duration of the loan is 40 years, then the deduction can be availed for 40 years. It uh, The deduction uh, can be claimed till the uh, repayment of loan continues. Content of deduction. The maximum deduction allowable is 1,50,000. The deduction up to of up to one lakh fifty thousand under section E double A is over and above the deduction under section twenty four B in respect of interest payable on loan borrowed for acquisition of a residential house property. So you can claim two lakh deduction under section twenty four B, and you can claim one lakh fifty thousand deduction under section eighty E A. In respect of self occupied property. Interest deduction under Section 24B is restricted to 2 lakh. In case of let out or deemed to be let out property, even though there is no limit under Section 24B, Section 713A restricts the amount of loss from house property to be set off against any other income, head of income, to 2 lakh. Accordingly, if interest payable in respect of acquisition of eligible house property is more than 2 lakh, the excess can be claimed as a deduction under section EEA subject to fulfillment of conditions means you can claim 2 lakh under section 24B and the remaining under as a deduction under section 80 EEA uh, because uh, there is a restriction under section 24B of the amount in case of self occupied property the loss can be maximum of 2 lakhs See, restricts the amount of loss to be set of any other 2, two lakhs no deduction under any other provision. The interest allowed as a deduction under Section EEA will not be allowed as a deduction under any other provision of the Act for the same or the any other assessment year. So, uh, they have said that you can claim it either under Section 80 EEA or under any other section of the Act. What is the meaning of financial institution? Financial institution is a banking community to which Banking Regulation Act 1949 applies or any banking or any bank or fin banking institution referred to in section 51 of the banking regulation act 1949 or a housing finance company housing finance company is a public company form or registered in india with the main object of carrying out the business of providing long term finance for construction or purchase of houses in india for residential purposes deduction in respect of interest payable on loan taken for purchase of electric vehicle that is deduction under section 80 ev this is one of the most trending sections regarding ev this section has motivated uh, individuals to purchase electric vehicles. So, one, this is an important section. Please keep it in mind. Eligible assets is any individual who has taken a loan for purchase of an electric vehicle from any financial institution. Interest payable on such loan would qualify for deduction under this section. The condition to be satisfied for availing this deduction are fellows. Loan should be taken for purchase of an electric vehicle. So loan should be taken for purchase of electric vehicle. The loan should be sanctioned between 1 4 2019 to 31st March 2023. Loan should be sanctioned by a financial institution that is a bank or specified NBHCs and the SEC should be an individual. So four conditions the, it, uh, and for reduction under section 80 EB. First there should be purchase of an electric vehicle. It should be purchased between the loan for the purchase of electric vehicle should be sanctioned between 1 4 2019 to 31st March 2023. The loan should be sanctioned by a financial institution that is bank or specified NBFCs and the SEC should be an individual. The period of the, the benefit. The benefit of reduction under this section would be available from assessment year 2021 and subsequent assessment years till the repayment of loan continues. Quantum of deduction. The interest payable subject to a maximum of 1,50,000. No deduction under any other provision. 
the interest allowed as a deduction under section 80e b will not be allowed as a deduction under any other provision of the act for the same or any other assessment year meaning of certain terms a banking company to which the banking regulation act 1949 applies or any bank or banking institution referred to in section 51 of the banking regulation act 1949 addition here is that any deposit taking nbfc or a systematically important non deposit taking nbfc means nbfc which is not accepting or holding public deposits and have assets not less than 500 crore as per the latest audited balance sheet and is registered with the rbi what is a electric vehicle a vehicle which is powered exclusively by an electric motor whose tra traction energy is supplied exclusively by traction battery installed in the vehicle the vehicle should have electric regenerative braking system which during braking provides for the conversion of vehicle kinetic energy into electric energy no need to refer this definition only you have to refer the banking what is a banking institution means bank and bfc deposit taking or systematic important non deposit taking and bfc or a banking account illustration the following other particulars relating to mr arun varun chetan tinesh salaried engineer for the assessment year 2023 the amount of loan taken is 43 lakh 45 lakh 20 lakhs and 5 lakhs respectively loan taken from different banking companies or nbfcs the sanction of loan is 20 for april 21 for april 20 for april 20 31 march 2019 the date of disbursement of loan is 15211521521521519 purpose of loan is acquisition of residential house property for self occupation acquisition of res residential house property for self occupation purchase of electric vehicle for personal use and purchase of electric vehicle for personal use the stamp duty of property is 45 lakh 48 lakh the cost of electric vehicle is 22 lakh and 18 lakhs the rate of interest 9% 9% 10% 10 compute the amount of deduction if any allowable under the pro <coughs> under the provisions of the income tax act 1960 for the assessment here in the hands of mr arun barun chetan and dinesh assume there has been no principal repayment in respect of the loan sir calculated above now recollect all the deductions which you have studied till now and once again i advise you to revisit the whole video if you have any doubts regarding the deductions or if you have kept in mind all the deductions then start with the uh, solution mr ravi interest deduction for assessment year 2023 deduction allowable while computing income under the head income from house property so did uh, he has taken a loan of 43 lakhs and the rate of interest 9% per annum so the, effectively for 11 months the interest comes to 354750 but the maximum he can avail is 2 lakh under section 24p rest the deduction can be claimed under section eea of up to 150000 the remaining amount of 354750 minus 2 lakh next is mr varun interest deduction allowable while computing inter under the head income from house property so he had taken a loan of 45 lakh from an nbf 48 lakh uh, 45 lakh is the loan amount taken from nbfc uh, the stamp duty value of is of the house property is 48 lakh and the rate of interest is 9% per annum so as the loan is taken from an nbfc but the stamp uh, duty value of the property is more than 45 lakhs the loan cannot uh, the deduction of the interest on the loan cannot be claimed under section 80 eea so the deduction is nil under section 80 EA, but he can claim the 2 lakh deduction under section 24b so deduction under section 80 eea would not be permissible due to either violation listed above next is mr chetan deduction under chapter 6a atb regarding the loan taken by mr chetan and mr dinesh for purchase of electric mega 20 lakh 12 lakh from 8 22 lakh 18 lakh 10 10 percent is the rate of interest so mr chetan deduction under section atb for interest payable on loan taken for purchase of electric vehicle in india that is 10 percent of 20 lakhs the loan amount is 2 lakhs but it is restricted to 1 lakh 50000 being the maximum permissible deduction under section 80 eb next is mr dinesh uh, deduction under section eb cannot be 
claimed by Mr. Dinesh as the loan is sanctioned before 1-4-2019, that is 33-2019, his loan has been sanctioned. If the loan has been sanctioned after 1-4-2019 to 31st March 2023, then only the loan can be claimed, as you can see it here.